The next step in the screen printing preparation process is coating the screen with emulsion. However, before we coat the screen with emulsion, we're going to mix the emulsion. Now, most of our kits come with dual cure diazo emulsion. This is the type of emulsion that you mix in an activator into. The reason we use the dual cure emulsion is because it has a more forgiving exposure latitude. The pre-sensitized emulsion, the type of emulsion that comes pre-mixed, is faster exposing, but as you're getting going, you have to dial down your exposure times much more calculated in order to properly expose the screen. This emulsion is a lot more forgiving, so it's what we recommend and what we include in all our starter kits to get you going. Now, when you mix your emulsion, it's good for a good three months at the most. Now, you don't want to let your emulsion freeze and you don't want to let your emulsion get too hot. If it freezes, it pretty much instantaneously ruins the emulsion. If it gets too hot, it starts to activate the diazo as well. So a good temperature to store your emulsion in is you know, 60 to 70 degrees. And keep it in a cooler environment, a dark environment, and it should last you up to three months. Now, to mix the emulsion, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the emulsion cap off and then we're gonna mix the diazo according to the directions of the emulsion. Keep in mind that once we mix this emulsion, everything needs to be done in a light safe environment until after the screen is washed out. During the screen preparation process with the degreasing, you really don't need to do that in a light safe environment. You can do that outside even if you want to. But once this emulsion is mixed up, it then becomes sensitized. Right now, the emulsion doesn't need to be light safe because it does not have the emulsion diazo in it. But once we mix this in, a light safe environment. So right now, we definitely should be in a light safe environment. According to the directions of how to mix the emulsion, you want to mix this with one half full of distilled water. Distilled water is like bottled water or distilled water. You don't want to use regular tap water because tap water can have iron in it, which can actually hurt your emulsion. So you do want to use distilled water. Or... The other thing that you want to do is you want to scrape any emulsion off the top of the lid into the container. If you have unsensitized emulsion on the top of the lid that then drips down in the, into the container, it can cause problems in your emulsion. So you just want to take your emulsion applicator or mixer and scrape as much off. This one doesn't really have a lot of it on, but others might. So scrape as much as you can off the top so that it doesn't drip down later. Then we'll use a bottle of water and mix this up halfway. You can kind of see when the halfway mark is. If you mix it up all the way, your emulsion can be a little runny, and if you don't put enough water in it, it can actually chunk. So once your water's poured in, you wanna shake it around and get that diazo all the way mixed up in the solution of the water. Diazo looks very yellow in color, much like iodine does. Once mixed up, we'll simply pour it in the unsensitized emulsion. See the yellowish color there? Next, we'll take our mixing tool, mixing stick, and start mixing it in. Now, you want to spend a good three, four, or five minutes mixing this diazo in so the emulsion becomes unified in color. Take the stick and move it around the outside edge to get all the unsensitized emulsion off the edge. You want to make sure to mix it up well so it all becomes very unified in color. This takes couple minutes to do. You see it's starting to mix, but we still see diazo streaks in there. Couple more, couple more minutes. Gallons can be a little harder to mix, and sometimes you can even either take a end of a drill bit or a mixing paint drill and use that to mix gallons or five gallons of emulsion. You want to be careful not to get too much air in the emulsion, so if you are using that, you want to set it on a very, very low setting. Scrape the edges off very well. If you spill it, just take a rag with some water on it and dry it off the edge, um, wipe it off the edge. Emulsion cleans up very easily with warm water. However, once it dries, it's very hard to get out. So if you spill it on a countertop or anything like that, you want to clean it up right away. Now, as you see right now, it's starting to become very unified in color. Okay, now that our emulsion is all mixed in, as was mixed in the emulsion, we're going to scrape off our coating stick, or our mixing stick. A lot of times we'll save this for cleaning out the scoop coater later, but you just want to 
wipe it off as, as good as you can if you are going to save it or just throw it away. We'll then clean off the rest of the edge of the emulsion container. Now if you notice, this emulsion has air bubbles in it. We just mix it up and it's starting to, all the air that we mixed into it is going to evaporate or work its way to the top. Before we actually use this emulsion, we want to ensure those air bubbles are allowed to escape. Because if we coat the screen right now, we'll get a lot of air bubbles in the, in the screen. We don't want that to happen. So what we'll do is we'll take the cap, put it on, but don't close it all the way. We want a little air to escape from it and let it sit for about two hours before you then coat the screen. The other important thing to do is once the emulsion is mixed, you want to put the date on it. Today's date is actually 11-23-08. And this will give you a reference point of when you mix the emulsion. So if it starts to go bad three months down the road, we'll know it's getting to its threshold point. When emulsion gets bad, it starts to clump up and it becomes hard to work with both in the coating process and in the exposure process. So by dating it, we'll know when it's getting to the you know, two and a half, three month threshold point where we'll need to buy some more emulsion and remix it. The next thing we're going to do is the coating process of the screen. Before we coat the screen, if we've never used a scoop coater before, we want to make sure to wipe this off in order to get all the dust and grease off the scoop coater. It wouldn't be a bad idea to use some degreaser the in your washed out sink, let it wa uh, wash it out and also dry it out. But wiping it out like this can ensure that it's clean for use. So once it's wiped out, what we'll do is we'll place our frame in a coating position. Now, to coat a screen, you want to have it at a, about an 80 degree angle and you want to have a stable coat. What we're going to teach is the dual hand coating method. You can also use a single hand coating method using one hand to hold the frame and the other hand to use the scoop coater. But as you're starting out, a dual hand coating method or two hands gives you more control. About waist high or a little bit under your waist, you want to have some kind of coating area to coat the screen. So this is about a good table height for my height to then coat the screens on. This is a coating stand. This stand allows us to set the screen in, set it up against a wall, and hold the screen in place as we then coat the screen. If you don't have a coating stand, what you can use is a 2x4, but sometimes the 2x4 can slide back and forth. So a coating stand is really nice to have and they're really cheap, they're only about 30 bucks, and it's a great tool to use in your dark room. Once our screen's in position, we will then use the scoop coater to coat the screen. We'll fill the scoop coater about halfway up with emulsion. We're gonna be using emulsion that's already been sensitized, obviously. And then we'll fill it up about halfway with emulsion. If you're only using one screen, you might want to not fill it up as much as if you're you know, coating multiple screens, but halfway. And then set the emulsion on the table. Use your stick to kind of clean the edge of the container off. Set it over to the side. Nice having a rag, a wet rag, because remember emulsion cleans very well with water. Get any emulsion off your hands. You can also use gloves as well. But you want to let your emulsion coaters sit to allow the emulsion to rest evenly in the trough. When you coat a screen, the goal of emulsion coating on a screen is to create the emulsion on the outside of the screen mesh. What you want to do is create a well on the outside of your mesh in order for the ink to set in. To explain this better, you have another video that gets much more in depth and shows you how to create a thicker stencil and why you'd want to create a thicker stencil, for instance printing white ink. That's located in the advanced section, and you can choose to watch that later if you want. But just to reiterate, we want the emulsion to sit on the outside of the mesh. So what we're gonna do and how we're gonna coat our frame, is we're gonna set it in the shirt side facing out or the flat side facing out towards us. We're gonna coat this side of the screen first, then we're gonna flip it and coat the inside of the screen second. What that does is that pushes all the emulsion to the outside of the mesh. Then we're gonna let it dry in the down position like so which then gravity actually takes the emulsion and pulls it to the outside of the mesh. 
We'll show for manual printing the one-in-one -one coating method, meaning that we're going to coat the screen once on the outside and then once on the inside. Depending on what you're using the screen for, and this is also covered in the advanced section we talked about just previously, is you're typically going to coat it one-in-one, -one, but sometimes for certain applications you might coat it two-in-two -two or two-in-one. When you're coating the screen multiple times, you typically need to let it dry in between. If you put too much emulsion on the screen, the screen mesh won't be able to retain it and it will drip all the way down onto your other screens, which is not what you want. So now that our emulsion is leveled out and our screen is in the coating position, we'll then go to coat the frame. You want to grab the scoop coater with both hands in about this position to give you a good grip on the coater. And we'll start about an inch or a half an inch up from the bottom of the frame. Now a lot of people are scared to put pressure on the mesh. That's not what you want to do. You want to give the coat of emulsion a very thin and crisp coat on the screen. So you do want to use some pressure. On the bottom of the frame, you'll push, what we'll do is we'll show this from afar and then we'll zoom in on it so you can see closer. You'll give it a good amount of pressure and push against the mesh. Then you'll roll the scoop cutter up to allow the emulsion to dam up on the mesh. Once the emulsion is dammed up and built a bead, you'll pull up evenly with both hands. As you pull up, you'll kind of hear the emulsion zip across the mesh. If you don't hear that zip, the likelihood is you're not pressing hard enough. About an inch from the top, you'll let the emulsion scoop coater slide backwards and the emulsion slide back into the coater. Then we'll kind of pull it off like that, pull the emulsion back in the screen and not to allow a bead of emulsion on the top of the mesh. Next. We'll flip the screen inside out. This is a little trickier. You kind of have to dip the coater inside the center of the frame in order to not spill emulsion all over the place. So just quickly dip it in the center and place it firmly against the screen mesh. Allow the emulsion to bead or dam up again. And then do the same thing on the inside of the screen, following your lines in the center of the frame. Then finish it off like so. You should have an even, smooth coat of emulsion on your frame. If you look at it through the light, you should see an even, even coat like so without any runs or ripples in the frame at all. Now for a close-up. About a half inch from the top, center of the screen, let the emulsion dam onto the screen. You can see it bead onto the frame. Once it's there, with a good grip on the coater and good pressure, evenly move it to the top of the frame. About an inch from the top, let the emulsion slide back into the coater and finish it off. A little trickier here, but dip it into the frame. Let it bead on and then finish it up to the top with a good amount of pressure. About an inch from the top, let it slide back in and then even it off. There we have a very smooth, even coat on the frame. Once it's coated like this, we'll then put it over in our drying rack and allow it to dry face down. We'll turn our fans on later and allow the fan to blow warm air across the emulsion. Now emulsion to dry likes a good amount of warm air. A good heat to have in your dark room would be 70 to 80 degrees. And remember, you want dry heat, not wet and humid heat. So having a dehumidifier if you're in a big dark room definitely helps, but you want that airflow circulating through your screen. You do want to segregate your emulsified screens from your degree screens if you're doing both steps at the same time. Once we've coated all our frames, we want to save this emulsion. It doesn't go bad, so we'll take it and scoop it back into the scoop coater using a stick or you know you can even use your finger if you have a glove on it. You want to get as much emulsion back into the coater as possible. Now you want to do this process all in order. You don't want to let the emulsion sit in the coater for you know, over five minutes because then it starts to dry out and if you put dry emulsion back into your wet emulsion it can clump up a lot easier. But right now we've done this all fairly quickly so we'll scoop it all back in as much as we can save there. Then once it's all back in, we'll cap the emulsion bucket and use it again later. 
To clean the rest of the coater, we're going to bring it over to the washout sink and use a little bit of emulsion remover and warm water to clean that out. What we can use is just a little bit of emulsion remover spray there. If you have a warm water, you don't even need to use emulsion remover. And then just rinse down your coater until it's clean and then let it dry. 